Letter Board Drift. This educational video is intended to draw attention to the problem of facilitator cueing in a technique called rapid prompting method. RPM, also known as spelling to communicate, is a variant of facilitated communication. These techniques build dependence on the facilitator, not independence for those being subjected to them. Please subscribe, like, share, and comment to help grow this project. In a video called Rachel Tells It All, Autism 101 Explained by an Autistic Self-Advocate, a facilitator holds a plastic letter board in the air as Rachel extends a finger toward it to spell I'm Rachel. The presumption is that the words are produced without facilitator influence or control. I, I, am, R, A, C, H, At first glance, this may appear to be a straightforward spelling session, but is it really? Look how much the letter board drifts as Rachel pokes at it with an outstretched finger. The yellow lines mark the starting point of the letter board, which in theory should not move throughout the session. How close is close enough? In addition to the letter board drift, which is most likely the result of the facilitator pushing or pulling the letter board to aid in letter selection, often without fully realizing it, Rachel does not appear to be able to spell I-M-R-A-C-H-E-L by only touching the letter board eight times. If she were proficient at the skill, she would not need to tap the letters multiple times or look to her facilitator for visual cues. All of her selections would be without ambiguity. Here, for example, Rachel touches directly on the eye, but here she touches near the eye. And here she hovers over the R, but does not make a direct selection. These distinctions may seem picky, but facilitators can and do call out letters not selected or conversely fail to call out letters that are, especially when the spelling sessions are quote unquote rapid. There should be no ambiguity as to which letter Rachel wants or how many times she intends to touch it. It goes without saying that these selections should be free from facilitator cues, whether inadvertent or not. I-M-R-A-C-H-E-L. Here is a closer examination of Rachel's letter selections and how the facilitator inadvertently responded by moving the board. Rachel touched on the I once and near the I once. Her facilitator called out I two times. The facilitator held the letter board even. Rachel hovered near the L before moving to the M, which she touched two times. The facilitator called out M one time. The facilitator appears to move the letter board away from Rachel's body towards the camera, possibly to make it easier for Rachel to touch the M, which is located in the middle of the second to last row from the bottom of the board.
Rachel hovered over the R, then touched near the R three times. The facilitator called out R one time. Again, the facilitator tilts the board down and out toward the camera, presumably to help Rachel access the R, which is in the middle of the bottom row. Rachel touched near the A once and on the A once. The facilitator called out A one time. The facilitator appears to pull the letter board slightly closer to herself, which helps Rachel access the A located in the upper left-hand corner of the board. Rachel overshot C but corrected the motion and touched the C one time. The facilitator called out C once. The facilitator appears to move the board slightly toward herself and keeps the board tilted. Rachel touched H once. The facilitator called out H once. The board remains the same as C. Rachel seemed to have trouble finding E. She slowly hovered over the letters, touched near J, then in the space between J and N, before looking at the facilitator, presumably for assistance. Rachel eventually touched the E while looking toward the facilitator. The facilitator called out E once. The facilitator appears to lift the corner of the letter board slightly to aid in finding the E. Rachel also appeared to have difficulty finding the L. She hovered over the N and M before touching L two times. The facilitator called out L once. The facilitator appears to move the board toward herself slightly to aid in letter selection. Counting only the letters which Rachel touched directly, plus the extra I called out by the facilitator, Rachel spelled I-I-M-M-A-C-H-E-L-L. When counting the near misses, or the times Rachel just hovered over the letters, then she spelled out I-I-M-M-R-R-R-R-A-A-C-H-J-N-E-N-M-L. What causes letter board drift? For this video, we'll focus on three main reasons for letter board drift. First, it's difficult to hold even a lightweight letter board in the air with one hand for any length of time. The board is naturally going to move slightly due to shifts in body position and the effects of gravity. Think about how difficult it is to hold a camera still in the air without a tripod. And while the optimum position for a letter board is directly in front of the client, facilitators most often hold the board in between themselves and the client as seen in this picture. That means the facilitator is holding the board in her right hand and stretches it across her body. This limits how far her arm can reach and can make it harder for her to see the letters. FC only works if the facilitator maintains constant eye contact with the letter board. The facilitator naturally over time is going to pull the letter board back towards herself. This facilitator does a pretty good job keeping her body still though her wrist moves quite a bit. Nevertheless, her arm shifts to the left as the session progresses. It only takes small movements to influence letter selection. Second, because of how the letter board is positioned,
The client can point most easily to the letters in the middle to upper portions of the letter board. Notice how straight Rachel's arm is when she points to a letter at the top middle portion of the board. But how her arm is more compressed as she points to a letter on the lower portion of the board. The facilitator is going to consciously or unconsciously respond to the client's shifts in body position and consciously or unconsciously adjust the position of the letter board by moving it up or down, left or right, in or out, depending on where the targeted letter is on the board. And finally, when the facilitator knows or thinks they know the sequence of letters being spelled out, they naturally and generally non-consciously move the board toward the desired letter. This is due to a well-documented phenomenon called the idiomotor response. Most of the time, facilitators don't even know they are doing it. I, I, M, R, A, C, H, E, Recap and Conclusion In this clip, Rachel and her facilitator spelled out I'm Rachel using a variant of facilitated communication called Rapid Prompting Method or Spelling to Communicate. Although Rachel appeared to have the requisite skills to point independently and was often looking at the letter board, she seemed to tap too many times for the eight-letter sentence, I'm Rachel. In addition, Rachel appeared to hover her finger over strings of letters and look to the facilitator for visual cues to select letters. Even though presumably Rachel has practiced spelling her own name many times. And finally, the facilitator appeared to move the board in the air, which inadvertently aided in letter selection. Letter board drift, often attributed to the idiomotor effect, along with other visual, auditory, and physical cues provided by facilitators, becomes automatic or second nature with continued practice and can fool facilitators and onlookers alike into believing FC-generated messages are free from facilitator control. However, with careful analysis, facilitator cueing can be detected, which raises questions about who is controlling the messages in facilitated communication. The Science To date, there's no scientifically rigorous evidence to prove facilitated communication, spelling to communicate, rapid prompting method, or any of their variants produce independent communication. Controlled studies show that facilitators, not their clients, are producing the typed messages. Many organizations oppose the use of facilitator-reliant techniques. These include, but are not limited to, American Speech-Language Hearing Association, American Association on Intellectual and Developmental Disabilities, American Psychological Association, Association for Behavior Analysis, Association for Science and Autism Treatment. FC is not science. For more information, please check out our website at facilitatedcommunication.org.